Hey, this is Randy from BibleBuyingGuide.com. I'm at Unite 2018 with Cromwell Leather. And they have some leather here on their table. And I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. Is this um, cowhide? Cowhide? And then cowhide? Also cowhide. Also cowhide. All right, well, this is Cromwell Leather. Who are we talking to here? Hi, I'm Tom Fleisch from Cromwell Leather. It's a pleasure to be with Randy and Lucinda here at the uh, ICRS tonight. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about genuine leather, a little about bonded leather, what it is, maybe explore and some of the mysteries and, and uncover that and decipher that and explain to you what things are. Maybe after this video you'll know a little bit more about leather and bonded leather. So Randy and I are going to talk. I also want to introduce you to my colleague, Margaret Zilkowski. We call her the Leather Bible Lady. She has been in this field for a long time, as have I. As have I. I hope you can hear me. Um, and, and we're both uh, dedicated to bookbinding leather. So the first thing I'd like to say about Cromwell Leather is that we have been in business since 1899. And our specialty is leather for books. And that's very important. Why is that important? If you take leather for upholstery or leather for shoes and you try and make it into a book, you're asking for problems. It's not the same kind of leather. When you have a heart problem, you don't go to the eye doctor, right? Leather for books is very special. So why is leather for books very special? Generally, right, when you're making a book, you want that book to last for generations. Right. If you are going to invest in a book, and it's an investment, mm -hmm. in something precious like leather, you expect you're going to be holding that book, making notes in that book, mm -hmm. perhaps passing that book down to your children or grandchildren, perhaps making comments about your family. So it's something that has to endure. Yes. Not one generation, multi-generations. And the leather has to maintain its properties. If there's a scratch and the color comes off, we can't say, well, put shoe polish on it. That's not what you do with a leather book, right? So we have to incorporate the properties, starting with the right type of animal, the right type of tannage, the right type of surface treatment, so that the leather will endure, so that it also works well in the bindery. This kind of leather has to be both accepting and rejecting. What do we mean by that? It has to reject soiling, it has to last a long time, but it has to accept foil stamping, Okay. unlike, let's say, upholstery leather, and it has to accept adhesive when you put the end sheet and make the cover. So, right, so there's a unique combination. So the first, most important point, book leather. And that's what Cromwell is about. Okay. All right. From there, we're going to talk about what is genuine leather yeah. and what is bonded leather or bonded leather fibers. Okay. So how about first talking about cowhide? Is that all right, Randy? Yes, I love cowhide. Okay. Cowhide is one of the most underrated leathers there is for bowels. In right. My I love cowhide. Cowhide, that's, that's correct. And uh, sheepskin is not great, doesn't hold up very long. Okay. Goatskin is good, but it varies enormously. Yes, because goatskin you can get from this country, from that country, uh -huh. the tannage, the seasonality. So you're just going, if it's good goatskin, it's mm -hmm. good, but it's also often not available consistently. Right. Winter months, summer months, drought. The cowhide that we use is the world's finest cowhide. This is made in our factory. All of our products are made in our own factory in the Valencia region of Spain. Spain has an enormous, long tradition of fine leather making that goes back centuries. And this cowhide, if you feel it and see it, and you can step back and take a look, has what we call a beautiful round in it and feel. It's very full body, like a full body coin. It's not empty, it's not teeny. And that's because of the nature of the cow and also the feed, the, the raising of the cow in Spain. It's very, it's not like in a tropical country where there are poor cows and they're not properly fed. You get this full body, beautiful feel, as well as a beautiful surface. So let's back up and take a look at this whole cow and explain about the leather. So I'm going to stand up and you can take a look here and, and explain what kind of a cow and what, what there is about cow. So Randy, you can stand at the end there. Okay. And I'm going to give Randy a little quiz. You okay? Is that okay, Randy? That's okay. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little. First off, this cow is half a cow. You see this line here? Maybe come a little closer because I don't know if you can hear me. We'll back right. up. <laughs> this is the a, this is the backbone. Okay. okay. And what Randy is holding up there is the backside. Okay. The rear. Okay. So this is the front. 
front. <laughs> ahead. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. Gotcha. And what Margaret will, you can back up a little, Lucinda. <laughs> Margaret will hold up here is the front leg. Okay. And that is the belly. And then that is the back leg. So are you going to get a full view of it? That's a half a cap. Hmm. Okay. So that's the, the big picture. Now let's talk about the little picture. All right. When you look at it, it looks like a sea of leather, right? Yes. But if we want to see what the cover is going to look like, we do this, we can say, aha, uh -huh. now we're looking at That's a cover. what that cover will look like. It'll be usually a little larger than that. And right? then we might stamp Holy Bible right exactly. here or stamp her exactly. name right here. Now, Randy, you're going to be the leather maker okay. and the cutter, and you're going to move okay. that around. Okay. And I'm going to move it to different parts of the skin, okay. cutting over here. Okay. And you see the grain changing? I do see the grain changing. So the wonder over here is smooth. It, right. And, and over here it's got more. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to Randy's point as to why cowhide is so good for hook binding is you have a great, wonderful, natural feel, but yeah. no two books will be the same. Every nice. book that you have is your unique book. Nice. And it will have that grain. Now let's look over here. Now, Randy, place, place it over here. Okay. You see these lines? Uh-huh. And look at these lines here, right? Yeah. Okay. This is where the cow raises and lowers its head. Oh. We call those the neck wrinkles. Okay. Right? Kind of like my neck wrinkles. There you go. <laughs> gotcha. And now, place it over here. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. And you see a beautiful grain character? That's beautiful. I love so, that. So, our customers say, we want that variation. Not that we accept it. We want that variation yeah. because every Bible we will make will be different. And they improve wow. with age because it develops through the oils in your hands and the use. You have to use yeah. it. Okay. A beautiful patina, especially yeah. on the spine. Okay. Right? Nice. So, no two so talking about oils in your hands. The oils in your hand nourish the, 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 it, the surface. Is that the best treatment for a leather yes. once it's on a Bible? Don't put anything on it. Don't put anything we on it. We put enough on there. Don't put okay. meats with oil or gold cream. The, the main thing is use it. Use it. That's, gotcha. that's what I've been telling everyone. Right. I get that question a lot. They say, well, what do I put on my Bible? And I tell them, You're, the oil's from your hands. Right. Use it. Right. So, and, and I'm right. So gotcha. You, okay. that's gotcha. That's if it's sure. the right leather. If it's, it's the right leather. leather. If okay. it's not the right leather to begin with, there's nothing you can do. Okay. Don't put, you know, oil on it and, or, yeah. or something else. Or, okay. or any of those commercial cleaners like mm. Armor Roll. That's not don't, good. Don't do that no. on the Bible. No. You might gotcha. on your car, but not on this. Gotcha. We, we okay. incorporate, that, incorporate that into the, the tanning. So it's already treated. The oils are in there. Gotcha. Right. right. So the best thing you can do with a Bible is use it. That's right. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> okay. That's beautiful. You like it, right? I do like it. Right. So we make this in a variety so of colors. So roll that up put it in my pocket. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just. So, so edit, we'll edit that part out. <laughs> what, what do we do? We, supply, we do the tanning and, and what's called the coloring. And then we supply the bindery with what's called the cut cover. Yeah. So we cut the leather and we make it to the perfect thickness. It's very important that we have a uniform thickness. Why is that? When you're making a wallet or a shoe, you can have some variation yeah. because you just sew it. Yeah. But in a Bible, you want to glue it, so, right? And it has to be perfectly flat and uniform. Because if it's not, what happens? When you go to gold standard mm -hmm. and one part is lower and another part is higher, the gold stamping won't be even. Yeah. You get what we call shouldering, the, the, the gold okay. starts to splash over, or it doesn't adhere properly, or it's too light in yeah. one area. So perfectly uniform thickness is essential. And we okay. provide this leather at exactly the right thickness. Okay. All right? Excellent. So, so there can be variations if you don't use the right leather. Right. Now, we do offer a different kind of leather. Same, same leather, but with a different treatment uh -huh. for those customers who say, I want it to be completely uniform. I don't want that variation in gray. Okay. Most customers want the natural, but if you if a customer wants all the books to look the same, then we emboss the leather okay. with a green pattern. And then okay. this this green, do you see how this is embossed yes. with the surface? Yes. So that's gonna look the same everywhere? Everywhere. So if I make a I make a book out of it here or if I make a book out of it here, it's gonna be yeah, that's the same all the way down, right. isn't it? And it'll wear and it'll beautiful. be beautiful. But it won't be as natural. Okay, so the smoother grain, the smoother grain is a natural grain. Right. Not that it is smooth. It still right. has some some ridges and ripples. Right. And what do you call that? It just now, we, no. This is a this is a great question because we we develop this grain through the tumbling process. Tumbling. Okay. By tumbling the leather, it in, accentuates and enhances yes. the natural grain. This was a pressed in grain. Pressed grain. Embossed. Okay. 
beautiful. If you, if you smell the leather, this oh, is yeah, awesome. Oh, yeah, I smell it. Mm -hmm. How's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. How is that? Good? It's beautiful. I love that. I love the smell of a good leather. That is a good smell of leather. And, and this is this is typical of the leathers in Spain. Now, okay. I, I, and you've probably done this too. And, you know, being in the in the Bible leather business, we observe what customers are doing and what their preferences are. And if you go to a bookstore, you have this commonality: people will first enter and look. Right. So looking is the first thing. If they like what they see. Mm -hmm. They walk up to the Bible and they feel it. Yeah. That's the next thing. So number oh, yeah. one, look. Number two, feel. You smell. There you go. You're <laughs> you ahead of me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's I knew where you were going. That. They do. Exactly. Pass the pass the. The smell test. The, the nose test. I guess you can call it smell test. Smell test. Smell test. <laughs> now you also make some awesome bonded leather. Now, bonded leather. There's variations, isn't there? Because not all bonded leather is the same. I've got some older Bibles, and Lucinda, our camera lady here, she's got some older Bibles that, I mean, she would use a Bible every year and have to use a different one. Right. Because the, the she, she would call it, what you call it, chalk ham. <laughs> because, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, because it would skip really easy, and you can just, it's almost like hard. But your leather's different from that, isn't it? That's right, our bonded leather. So we make the bonded leather in our factory in Spain. Uh -huh. We control the process from the beginning to the end. And I'm okay. going to revert to the same thing I said in the beginning, okay. which is it's made for books. Yes. There's a phrase in, in business laws that they call it suitability for fitness and purpose. Which means okay. when you make anything, a chair, mm -hmm. you have to know that somebody's going to sit on it and it's got to hold the weight. We make our bonded leather and our genuine leather for books. So if it's made for something else, if it's made for the heel of a shoe, mm -hmm. it's not going to be appropriate for books. And that's where people have used inappropriate yeah. formulations, inappropriate bonded leather, and given that product a bad name. Right. But if you use the right bonded leather uh -huh. and you control the entire process from A to Z, then you can make bonded leather. It will not last as long as genuine leather. Okay. Our genuine leather, as Margaret often likes to say, it is built to last generations. Okay. The bonded leather ought to last about one generation. So that's okay. still a long time. Yeah. And Margaret has put together a... Uh, so you have some samples. Yeah, some samples. So she can show us her samples. can. It's just, okay. This is <laughs> um, a demonstration of our bonded leather. And, and she's been traveling. She sees customers all the time. And they were frustrated by not being able to understand what bonded leather is. So she put yeah. together a package here okay. to show the fibers the way they first start out. Now, where okay. do we get those fibers? It's not from old shoes. It's okay. from the process of making a cowhide thinner. Okay. Right? A full thickness cowhide is like a piece of saddle leather or a piece of sole yeah. leather. It's about twice as thick as this. It's, it's too thick for a bonded leather. It's lizard. too thick. So okay. what we do is we split the leather, okay. cut it in, in, in laterally or uh, horizontally. Okay. And then the bottom becomes a piece of suede. Okay. And the top is what we call top grain, in this case, full grain leather. No okay. changes to here. This is top grain leather, this is full grain leather. Full okay. grain is the natural grain, uh -huh. and this is top grain, meaning the top side, the outer side of the leather, the and, epidermis. And that's the one that's been embossed? Well, that's the one that's been embossed, that's right. Now, to make this leather, one of the processes to make the right thickness is uh -huh. shaving. So we take the fibers off the suede side, uh -huh. and that looks like this okay. in the process before the leather has been colored. Okay. That's our raw material for bonded leather. Is that how you make your calf split? Yes, the split is the bottom part, not okay. really advisable for books. Okay. It's better to have the grain than the split. The split is the bottom part. Okay. That's right. Okay. So this is the way the fibers start out. Okay. And then they're ground to make okay. them finer. And then we have a process where we grind it further, add water, add tanning oils, mm -hmm. and then we combine the product with latex to hold the fibers together to do the bonding. That's okay. where the word bonding comes from. Okay. And this is the way it then comes out on both sides before there's any color or grain. Okay. So this, number one, two, three. Okay. So do you have examples of your leather on bubbles? Yes. Okay. We do. So. Um, the genuine leather, <laughs> this would be an example, and this would be an example. Okay, so 
this is a, this level. This this is this one here. Right. And it's got the the, the variation. Right from the tumbling. So this might be from the neck area. This would probably be cut from up here. Okay. And we can tell that because of these lines. Right. The lines exactly. Gotcha. And then the other part is here. So this one may be more from the back of the cow. Because it's more even. Smooth. Smooth. Right. And more even. Exactly right. And each one will be unique. And each one will be. Good. Nice. That's a soft feel. I love the feel of it. Isn't that great? You just want to hold it. Hey. That would be a good breed. This is what we call a dummy. This was way. I want a dummy. With Can I have a dummy? Block. I need a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it. Sometimes that's what they call me. I need dummy. a dummy. <laughs> this, I, I want one of these. I want a dummy. <laughs> what else we got? This is not the dummy. This is this is printed, but also in the in the cow head. Okay. So this is. Does this have some? Variation. This so is natural. This, this is, is natural. also would be cut maybe but from from this part, from maybe the the, right. the leg, right, right there, the area. and then this part would be cut into where it's smoother. So you'll see okay. the variation even within the cover itself. Oh wow! So yeah, you see the the deeper grain here, right, and then the smoother grain here, right, and that's just one piece of leather, right, natural. So that's a natural grain, natural cowhide. Exactly. Beautiful. It's got a soft feel to it. I love you like that the feel? feel. I do. I love that. And you like the temper, right? Yeah. But that's about right for me. It's not too floppy. Right. It's just right. Right. I can hold that. That's a good size too. <laughs> okay. So should oh, we talk we a little through. bit about the bonded leather um, yes. books? Yes. Okay. So our bonded leather, we have a variety of them. This is a bonded leather. It's finished. This is called a that. Eurobond. Right, it's the okay. timber, beautiful color. This okay. is like a, a beautiful uh, Italian type look, right? And it has we a lot of that bass grain with it. You see the, the rich toning? Yeah. Color. So there's some variation in the color. Right. That, yeah, I, I love that. And we incorporate that. In, so we start off here and then we incorporate that in the coloration and the graining. So process. this becomes Comes this. this. Right. Exactly. Through the process of. Right. And it's an elaborate process on a machine that's over 100 yards long. Wow. Oh wow, that's pretty. Cool. Our, our leather Bible girl has, has handed me some, so, some more leather. Okay, so this is processed into this. Exactly right. That's got a nice green. I love that right. color. It's got a good feel to it. Right. And so the temper is good for turning. Okay. Right. And and this is built to withstand to, to last a long time. Yeah. And this particular surface treatment resists everything. We could put ketchup or coffee on there 24 hours and wipe it off. Oh, nice. It's called our Eurobond. Eurobond. So Eurobond is what I want to use when I'm drinking my coffee. That's it. All right. That's Eurobond. it. And um, so this is, is a particularly nice form of leather. We have um, another form called Tarotan too, okay. which is a little more economical. Uh -huh. And so it depends on the type of price point that you want to hit as far as okay. um, Selling a Bible or purchasing a Bible? Do you want to spend twenty dollars? Do you want to spend thirty? Do you want to spend fifty? Do you want to spend eighty? This might be a eighty or hundred dollar Bible. Uh -huh. Fifty dollar Bible, okay. and depending on where the publisher is. This are, also a dummy. Okay, okay. I wanted a dummy in this time. <laughs> you wanted a dummy. I wanted. I like that. Right. Okay. So you, what, there is one other. If you okay. want to hear it further, I do. I do. Um, and it's our latest bond of leather. Oh, There's nice. been a lot of um, interest in sustainability. Yes. Now, when you have these leather fibers and you make them into bonded leather, if we didn't make bonded leather, they would go into a landfill. For every Bible, every square foot of bonded leather that we make, we're saving from these fibers going into the landfill. Okay. But there are people who have particular environmental interest and they say, I'd like to see some bonded leather that's not coated at all. I'd like to see it, see it in its in its natural, natural. form. Okay. And so we're making a product called Renatura. And Renatura has no coating. And this is this is it. So Renatura. you see and you can feel it. Nice. And it has so we make it in, in this and then we make it in this version that is embossed. Okay. And if you look at um, at this, this does spilled mustard or ketchup on there, it would make a stain, unlike here. Okay. So it's so less don't protected. Spill coffee on it this would one. still wear nicely, but it's not it doesn't have any any coating. Okay. But it is made to darken and burnish with heat. Oh I see. So this became this. Actually um, 
or the, the other way? It, it started in this color, and then the darkening just makes it darker. Oh, okay, I see. So we start with either this I color, see. this color, or that color. And then you can put any kind of green you want. Right. So is this a behemoth skin? Like an elephant. Oh, okay. Or a, I was close. I was close. Rhinoceros. Like Leviathan skin. I was close. Leviathan. Right. right. Excellent. Hey. I love that one. I work with all missionaries. Excellent. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. So is this available yet? Or? It is. It is. In fact, I'm going to show you the Bible. It's made out of it. And it has a unique treatment. Oh. Because this Bible oh, that's nice. has laser etching. Laser etching. Wow. So this is this leather here. Yes. It's one of wow. these. Right. It looks like that one somewhere. It's the Rena Turrets. Rena Turrets. Turret. What you have. The Rena Turrets. It's a different shade. Oh, I see. But I see. It's, um, it's the Rena Turrets uh, bonded leather. Now, laser etching. So that's been burned in with the laser? In here, yep. Oh, this has. This part has been burned in. And this. And this. I got right. you. And then it has some foil. So with laser etching, then, you can make any kind of design you want. Right, right. Beautiful. And one thing about bonded leather fibers or bonded leather, it, it has an alternative equally admissible name. Uh-huh. And, and, and this is something, Randy, that you'll appreciate so that people aren't confused. Genuine leather should be called genuine leather. Yes. Bonded leather should not be called genuine leather. It should Correct. not even be called leather. Okay. It should only be called bonded leather, bonded leather fibers, or one additional name, which is recycled leather fibers. Recycled leather fibers. That's all okay. okay. But otherwise, you'd be fooling people. And there are things going on in the market where people are using the word cowhide for plastic and synthetics, oh, wow. which is, is really deceptive. It's unfortunate. Yeah. So it's our responsibility as manufacturers, especially you who are in touch with the world, yeah. to make things clear. And that's why this video is so useful, because mm -hmm. in a period of 10 minutes, you can see yeah. what we're talking about and know that leather should be leather. Mm -hmm. Bonded leather is okay if it's made well. Mm -hmm. Bonded leather fibers are recycled leather. But the two should not be confused. It shouldn't be calling yes. it just leather, even yes. though it has leather content and leather fibers, yes. right? Yes. So you wouldn't call hamburger steak, right. but it's still beef, right? Right. And you want to identify really what it is. Makes sense. Right? Makes but it's not something that comes with yeah. yeah. So you have these variety of things, and I hope that's been useful mm -hmm. in understanding both leather and bonded yes. leather. And if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Which is your favorite? Which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. This one right here? Whole grain cow. That's my favorite. How about you? Absolutely. Whole grain cow. Our favorite is the cow. Yeah. <laughs> or natural. Yeah. Lucinda is nodding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah. Yep. I think we have yeah. a, a unanimous decision. <laughs> you know, it's actually something that's precious, right? Yeah. I mean, we should treat it as something precious. Right. You're making an investment, you're spending $80, $100, mm -hmm. $120 or more, mm -hmm. and it's going to be something that's going to last a long time, and it should be handled to treat really? it that way, but you're going to get a lot of pleasure out of using it, especially yeah. if you do use it, yeah. and it's going to get better over time. And you know what it's going to develop on the spine? It's what we call a patina. P-A-T-I-N-A. It's when leather is worn like a saddle, yeah. and it gets that a little bit brighter, a little yeah. smoother look, and it's yours, it's and you just, it's sense. like a, a, a something that you even grow attached to more over yeah. time. And so, Excellent. you know, we we like it because people appreciate how beautiful it is. Mm. And it's yeah, a matter of, of, of explaining. But I'm, I'm glad that we all agree this is what we like the best. Yeah. All right? So how can our, our readers and our viewers learn more about Cromwell Well, that's a good question. Uh, we have a website. We kind of keep a low profile because we work with publishers, we work with binderies, and then they present it in their okay. own way. So we are back on the chain. So you don't sell directly to the public? No, we don't. You because sell we to just publishers. sell the letter. Right, gotcha. right. So we are part of that chain. If you were going to, say, uh, eat a great steak and you're going to go to your favorite restaurant, but you wanted to talk to the rancher who raised the cow. You're the rancher. Uh, we're the rancher. You're the rancher. So we welcome any any questions. Go to our okay. website. You can send us any inquiries. Margaret knows uh, a lot about the Bible industry in particular, who we work with, where you can get, which pretty much... Almost all of the publishers that we love to use are either, we use both our genuine leather and our bonded leather. And you can ask them, is it Cromwell leather, is it Cromwell bonded leather? Sometimes they actually mark the product with that. And it's all made in the Valencia region of Spain, which is also a nice selling point that it's not, it's made in a place with a long tradition of beautiful leather making. Excellent. I appreciate it. Okay, Brandon. Our pleasure. Okay.